give it another minute. Okay, it's 8 o'clock. Uh, welcome to the Camp Zombie live stream. Um, this is session six. This is a, uh, gonna, we're going to be focusing more on um, Mr. Lurkin himself uh, this time. Last week we studied, uh, or we did character designs of the pet, um, the uh, bus driver, the, the airboat driver's pet, and uh, this week we're gonna focus more on back on the zombie again because I wasn't too happy with the way it's going with him you know initial designs this stuff happens all the time so bring it up okay so I'll do a little quick recap um, so these were the initial session one designs these were the designs that I came up with uh, main character being Lenny or I'm sorry Benny down at the bottom um, tiny little kid um, and, uh, you know, the camp counselor, the head counselor is Edsel, kind of a really fatherly, fun-loving guy. Terry Ann is kind of a malicious, but okay. She's, she's not exactly a villain, but she's a, a minor antagonist, um, as the assistant counselor. And down here we had the first iteration, or I'm sorry, the, the second iteration of Mr. Lurkin, um, and then I did a little bit more studies of the other kids. I did um, this little girl right here with a side ponytail. She's a, a transfer camper from Australia. This little dude here on the end, don't have a name for him yet, still figuring him out. Um, he is the enthusiast. He's the horror and zombie enthusiast and, and all that. And you've got um, the uh, driver right here who drives the, the airboat uh, uh, camp bus, if you will. Really funny funny guy, ex-NASCAR driver kind of guy. Um, and this was the airboat, rough, rough sketch of the airboat. We'll be doing more studies of this later on. But it needed to be kind of hot rodish and thrown together and just kind of junk-like, but I wanted it to still have elements of a yellow school bus kind of a thing, so I started playing around with the front of it and used some good reference here, as you can see. Um, and then uh, this was the gator. This is the driver's pet gator. Um, she's super fun. Uh, I think we decided that it's a girl because uh, that would be really hilarious and uh, you know um, she's got a heart of gold but she can be really menacing right up front she's absolutely monstrously large compared to Venny um, so going through all that I'm going to focus a lot more on doing a further further design exploration of Mr. Lurkin uh, Ben Lurkin the, the zombie and originally I had him as an older man who had been kind of undead because of he, he ate uh, past its date uh, ice cream and he's got a craving for dessert, not um, not brains, because it's a kid's show. And uh, he's got a big thing for desserts and uh, ice cream in particular, but all kinds of desserts. And I, I did something a little different this time. I pre-thought about the kind of design that I wanted to do and did a little bit of studies and came up with something I like, but I wanted to take you through tonight the road that I took to get there. So the studies and the shapes and things like that. Um, and it also helped me define what the end design of the characters for this show really need to be, what that final st style is that I'm shooting for. And I can go back to the other characters based on this and start refining them even further. Um, and then, you know, start playing around with personality sketches and things like that. I had the idea that this zombie... Uh, would take on the personality of whatever dessert he was eating. So if it was something that was very, like, very snooty and very frou-frou and things like that, he would, you know, slick back hair and a bow tie and a tux and things like that. And, you know, he takes... It, the dessert that he eats changes his personality and it would be a really fun, uh, huge turn of the show. And I decided also to make him a little bit younger. So I'll start off, like, uh, I'll give you size comparison. So you've got little Venny down here. 
little tiny dude. He's the smallest camper there, aside from maybe the girl from Australia. Um, and then you've got Edsel up here, and this is a rough size comparison. Um, he's not the biggest adult of the camp, but he's still an adult. And that design-wise, you have to think about size comparisons so that it doesn't trick your eye when you see two people on screen size-wise. Uh, the first couple of designs for the zombie were up here. Well, let me black that out. Um, I started off with uh, the one on the right. So yeah, he was the first one. And then a bit more refined on the one on the left. And he still gave me that... He's a little bit dumb kind of look. And not as fun. He's just kind of stupid. Um, a little bit like uh, Sloth from the Goonies or something like that. Just kind of, kind of a doofus. Um, and I didn't want to give that too too strong of a of a vibe so i decided to go back to the drawing board scrap his design completely um and i won't show you what i came up with yet i want to show you the road that i got there i'll show you kind of near the end i've got it over my side screen so i can kind of keep an idea of what to talk about but uh i'm gonna go back and show you how I kind of went about doing it. And uh, just as a side note, I had some lag and some resolution issues with my last YouTube stream, so apologies for that. Um, my pen lag was because I got a new computer, love the new computer and everything, but some of the old hardware doesn't work or play with others well. I got a new iMac Pro, um, and the, the machine I was using for my quick key system for like the undo buttons and things like that, just old hardware and old software. And it didn't like it, so I had to take it out, and I'm just using my, my regular keyboard now. But as soon as I took it off, my pen works great. So for those that are upgrading, good good thing to know about. So I'll keep the old designs up. I'll shrink them down a little bit. So uh, we can kind of keep that visually there. Um, so in looking at him, like I said, he was too old and a little too stupid, and I think part of that was because I too much of a variation with his eye shapes and things like that, and he's kind of all over the place design-wise. There wasn't as much about his facial expression and things like that. He looked kind of happy but dumb at the same time, and it didn't really push that as much as I wanted it to, so I started off with the wrong color. <laughs> Let me do this better. Ah, there we go. Okay. Let me go back to the gray. Uh, okay. So I started off with um, a little bit of a different shape for the head. And I was, you know, I'll keep Edsel up there too because I used him quite a bit. Let me bring him down in size a little, fit everything on canvas so you can see everything. It doesn't get confusing. So I started off with this kind of shape. You know, is the adults, tall heads, things like that. Um, that's the kind of the way I'm going with it. And, uh, you know, just the basic shape like this. Because kid shows, I, I may have mentioned this in an earlier episode or an earlier session on my YouTube, but the younger the kids show, the simpler the shapes need to be. There was a study done. Um, There was a study done of uh, how kids react and understand to stories and shapes and things like that, and what they can tolerate, what their mind can see and tolerate, and as you grow, the more complex shape you can see, and they were actually able to map it. And that plays into show design and things like that. Um, you typically design a little bit older than the age you're shooting for. Because you want kids to stretch a bit with uh, the design you're using. So I started off a little bit more like this. So he was a little too grotesque and a little too dumb. The whole tongue thing and hanging out of his mouth thing conveyed too much stupidity. So, and I also had his eyes way too small um, compared to the other ones. Like the other ones all have like really big pupils. Um, so I started off this time kind of going in this direction. I can already tell my pen's feeling so much better this time. And I'm also paying attention to the style of these characters. So I'm keeping in line with um, lost and found edges and things like that. So 
So this is rough sketch. I'll go back and refine a little. So it was kind of going like this. And uh, instead of his tongue hanging out, he's just really, really happy. You know, I can play with his teeth a bit, you know, and make him. Because he is the new, or old slash new camp chef. I am going to give him a, uh, you know, hairnet. He doesn't have any hair yet. Don't worry about it. I'm not there yet. And even here, he's still looking a little bit older. I was given a few wrinkles, and it's not bad. Um, there was a youthful exuberance that I was missing in uh, the initial design up here. You know, he looks, I said he kind of reminded me of, if any of you have seen the original Pet Cemetery movie, um, Ed Gwynn, who played the old man that warns him about the street. That's what it looks like this guy up in the upper left of the all the ice cream scoops that's what he looks like he sounds like and it was it skewed a bit too old for me i just didn't wasn't what i was trying to go for and you know if in keeping with this is like a show maybe i've been given a brief on this character um it, it wasn't the right character based on the brief like the brief is the written description and you know i could play with the youth a bit here with the hair and making the hair longer and um you know, I toyed with the idea of different hairstyles and things like that, and I'm like, okay, what if he wasn't old when he got turned into a zombie? What if it was like a summer job for an older teenager, a young 20-something guy, who was a little bit of a slacker, but overall a nice guy? Um, so what if he came from the 80s, and he's a mullet? How cool would that be? That's fun. That's, you know, all party in the back. Um... That would be a lot of fun. So for those that are watching too, if you have any questions as I go, please feel free to comment in the live comment section. I'll be happy to answer any questions you got. So the hair nut, that's what this line is. It kind of hangs, hangs off the back. Just rough indicators, things like that. So this is this is more of the direction that I was hoping to go, and I'll do I'll do a couple of variations on this as soon as I get his head down the body. I'll get the body in a second, but his shoulders need to be. I wanted his shoulders to be kind of high up, so his shoulders would be up here. So I'm just indicating where those would be right now. It's kind of some lines, things like that. It's gonna have one hand up in the air, kind of like the other guys do, except play with it a little bit more. Yeah, okay. So that's roughly kind of what I wanted. I'm going to play a little bit with some aspects of this. This is what I came up with as a new basis, and I like it. I like it a lot, but I, I the other thing, too, is I looked at these designs up here, and if I was going to do all this stuff with his personality based on what he eats, these don't get me much room to go. I need a, a design that will allow me to expand on that design and keep it looking like that character. And I know the show's directors, oops, I know the show's directors would say the same thing. So let me check one thing real quick. All right, just wanted to make sure the sound is coming through. I have this playing on an iPad off to the side and my other screen so I can, um, you can see it over on my right. Uh, just want to make sure every, everything technically is kosher. All right. All right, so that's more or less the design area we want. Um, so I'm going to take that. And one real quick way to do this is uh, copy and paste and then augment the design I've already got so I don't have to keep redrawing the things that I like. Um, this way I can play just with the things I want to change. So this time around, we're going to play with his eyes, his eyebrows, make his eyes really big.
let that hairnet line go through his eyebrow. That's fine. I make the rules. They're my characters. I can do what I want. Okay. So I'm going to, instead of keeping them both kind of looking straight forward, I'm going to make one just a bit bigger than the other, which I really like. I like the way that's going. I'll worry about the little specular light in his eyes in a second. All right, so remember what I said about this little tool right here, this little uh, transparency pen. Like, instead of a color, you do transparency. It allows you to turn your brush into an eraser using the actual brush you're using. So that's very cool, very useful. Yep, do it like this and his eyes actually match a little bit better uh, Venny's down here because Venny is the character base that I'm going off of to design for the rest of the show. So there we go. Sorry, my toolbox moved over. Um, getting used to my new computer. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm liking this a little bit better. Just a little bit more character involved. Yeah, he's a little crazier. He's a little more fun, if you understand what I mean. Um, he looks like he's up for anything, and now. The decision I had to make was how do I convey that he's a zombie? How, how gross do I make the lines? Do I put warts on him? Do I put, like, flesh? Or do I just play with the color? Um, give him maybe a little less teeth, things like that. Um, and maybe just play with the color of his skin. And I decided to opt for just the color of his skin because there's you got to be careful with the detail you put in a character. You want to make him so that he can be animated. Um, you know, the animators aren't going to have a heart attack with all the lines you're giving him because the more lines you use, the older he looks and... You know, as a character designer, you have to keep in mind uh, the pipeline, the production line. That's what you call the, like the line of people that are creating characters for a show. Um, you have to keep that in mind, and your directors will love you a lot more if you can keep in mind and pay attention to the pipeline. Because your involvement in the show just keeps going. Like Once you design the characters, you're also going to be there every step of the way to make sure characters stay on model, depending on the show, things like that. So you can see the difference, like his eyebrows are raised up here, they're small. And he looks younger and more youthful than the one down here. His eyes are a little wider, it's a little more innocent looking. Um, the wider the eyes, the more innocent a character looks, the bigger the pupils. That's the whole Bambi uh, syndrome, as I like to call it. So there's that. All right, and we're gonna play a little bit more again with another one. If you see my dog in the background, don't pay attention to him. <laughs> he likes to hang out with me in my studio. All right, so uh, let's see. Play a little bit more with the eyebrows. I'm going to keep the eyes the same way here and maybe play with the mouth a little bit. Start playing with different Close this time just to kind of get an idea of what he's about. A little curve to his cheek right there. I like that. I like that a lot. Maybe we'll keep that. And while this isn't as much of a different design, it is um, maybe what he looks like with his mouth closed. And that gives you an idea like, does it, 
does his chin look too big? Does he, you know, do I need to bring his shirt line up a little bit? Or his apron line, he's got an apron on, so. Sorry. <laughs> it's getting a little restless. Maybe give him a few whiskers. Yeah, so if you're looking at these differences, they're subtle differences. They're very subtle differences because we're in that part of the design phase now where the differences aren't massive. Um, yeah. Okay, we'll try this again. Let me move this one over here. Bring down one more. Okay, we're gonna take and do a little bit of creative. Make sure I got the right layer. Do a little bit of creative things going on here. I'm gonna take his eyes. put them on him because I like raise too much huh. I like the way the eyes came out I really like the way the eyes came out on that but going off of this guy I really like his cheeks So of those four, I think this is kind of the way to go. I think this is more along the lines of the way I want to go. So we'll keep that. I'll play a little with his ears too on this one. I can get rid of these others. I can make them disappear because I think this is the one I'm going to start playing with more. Obviously, I'll make it a little bigger for you guys. Let's play, maybe give him square ears. Then he's got round ears, maybe this cat's got square ears, so. Put that back in a little bit. And even though you really wouldn't see his ear, like if you were really looking at this in three-dimensional fashion, his other ear wouldn't be this close, but I'm playing a little bit of, uh, I'm cheating a little bit by popping it out there. And they do it in cartoons all the time, good grief. I mean, the amount of times you they cheat the design like that. Okay. Let me do the same thing to his nose. Let me square his nose off just a little bit. Because in uh, some of the other redesigns that I'll do when I go back and I revisit Ed Solo over here, I might change his nose so it's not quite so detailed because Venny's nose is just a simple oval. Um, uh, Mr. Lurkin, Mr. Ben Lurkin, that's his full name. Uh, Ben Lurkin's nose is more square. I think I'm going to keep that. Um, just keep it in the same simple design aesthetic. You know, I want it to be like, if I had to do a flashback episode of what the what this character was like before he became a zombie, this is how I think he'd look. It's just that he his pallor changes and he doesn't lose his enthusiasm. He was a really happy guy, and he loved working at this camp. That's the way I'm thinking of it in my head. And he loved serving dessert. Like, that's his big thing. He's like the craziest, cool ice cream truck driver you've ever seen. Um, no creep creepiness at all. He's just a really cool guy. Okay, yeah. Pop him up here and work on the rest of his body. Let's play around a little bit now. Do I want to make a big apron? see what we do and want to make sure 
And in the original drawings, I had him with a ladle, like a soup ladle. And what is he, like soup? You know, like he serves all the food, yeah, but ice cream and dessert is what he's all about. So I changed it with the ice cream cones, and now all that worked great. And I put the other hand in his pocket. This hand on this design right here looked a little strange. It's kind of off the side. Now it's in his pocket. It's not doing anything. So I decide maybe one hand has ice cream. The other one has like the ice cream scoop. You know, like that's a better way to present the character. And I'm just roughing in the, the base shapes for... I can do better than that. I can do a lot better than that. I was roughing in the base shapes for his hand, you know. This little oval thing for a scoop that comes down, that's a hard shape to tackle. <laughs> anyway, realistically. So, yes, as I know it's on the other side of his hair, but I need to do what's called draw through so I can see where everything is and it's supposed to be. Just kind of indicating where the ice cream scoops would be. Do I envision him having parts of him that pop off? I, he could, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Like, you know, he finds a thumb in his ice cream, like that would be hilarious, yeah, I like that idea. Um, that would be a great way to show it, or an ear pops off here and there or something, you know, um, or one eye goes wonky sometimes, like one eye just kind of wanders off to the left or something. Something that could indicate his zombie hood without it being too gross, uh, because it's not about the gross factor, that's not what I'm going for. At least, you know, like I'm thinking the enthusiast kid would be like really disappointed that he's not as gross and disgusting as he hoped he would be as a zombie. But this looks like a kid that's, you know, it's his first summertime job or something. That's what I, I really thought it would be great and keep the show more youthful. Um, the villain is kind of an older dude and I don't want the zombie to be an older dude too. So absolutely, that's a great, great thought and idea on this character. So in keeping with these kind of short body, tall heads, so you've got basically this kind of distance here. If I look over here at Edsel, you know, or not Edsel, uh, yeah, Edsel, sorry. Edsel, let me drop him below so I can draw on top. Um, and he's got this, and he's got this, and it's roughly a one to two ratio. So if this is a two, then this would be about right here. And I learned a long time ago, I mentioned this in a previous episode, Steven Silver is a really, really well-known character designer. And um, I love his work and I, I've i been in contact with him several times, but the first time I ever met him was at Comic-Con back in 2010. Brought some work with me so he could see it and he gave me just really great advice. I had this one character as a professor, his brain was in a jar above his head, attached to his head. And he gave me a great advice. He said, all of my proportions are too equal. Everything is measured out exactly and you need something to be emphasized. And while the brain's emphasized, I really need to measure out other things less proportionately. So the head obviously is the big part of the, about him. So the body needs to be smaller. Like if the head ends here and the body's here, like that means the legs are here. Which also is a design fail for the apron. So the apron's gotta come up. Um, I just put that line there just to start, you know. So by, for all intents and purposes, this is a, a much cuter zombie, and that's okay. I, 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 I've got other series of work that I do gross stuff and things like that with my portrait work for my macabre morbidlies and things like that. Um, you know, and maybe, you know, it's, it's, there, it's this wide stance and I'm giving all these characters, so... And I thought maybe he's from the 80s, maybe one one side is a pinch roll for all you 80s kids out there. You know, so we're going with this, and 
honestly, the arm's too long, so I'm going to shorten that a bit. There we go. Now, the arms are longer than they normally would be, of course, in, in proportion, and that's okay. I'm, I'm okay with playing with that. I can stretch this one out because he's, like, really stretching up tall. You really want to push that, that squash and stretch. That's a atypical animation trick. You know, uh, not trick really, but design element. When a ball is animated, it goes through the air and it goes through the air and it stretches out at its apex. And then as it comes back down, it looks normal halfway down as it's bouncing. And then when it hits the ground, it flattens out and it goes right back up again to the next bounce. Um, it's animation 101. And I, I got to think squash and stretch when it comes to characters too, because all, all characters, if you could actually see the drawings that go into making a character move across the screen, some of the drawings would horrify you. There's some really hilarious stills you can see of Disney animation and Warner Brothers, things like that. It, like animation caught at just the wrong time. Um, and it's really funny. It's really, really funny. And since this is the 80s, I think I'll give him some high tops. Maybe it was, you know, Jordan's or whatever. straight apron and there'll be some stains on there and I'll show you I'll show you the design like all these design elements are coming together I'm roughing together what it was that got me to the design that I really liked and I'll show you that finalized design these are just a rough version of that there's a cleaned up version which helped me figure out the style at which I wanted to draw all the other characters in final form and it's very <laughs> it's very goofy and very wacky and extremely Warner Brothers-esque. Less Disney, more Warner Brothers. Um, Warner Brothers exaggerated their characters much, much more than Disney did by a long shot. And uh, that's the right one. All right. And what I'll do is I'll show you, once I get this kind of roughed out and everything, I'll show you what I came up with, this the clean version, and then I'll go back and maybe look at some of the other characters and match, you know, and, and clean those up just a little bit so you can compare to the zombie. Um, or maybe I'll play with expressions. I don't know. It'll be a free-for-all night. The big focus is this guy. So he's got his ice cream scoop. He's got his ice cream. Oh, maybe one of the ice cream has chips. It's dripping down a little bit. Yeah, there we go. Ice cream! You know, the other thing I got to think about, too, is what the color palette that I want to use. Like, he's got the camp logo on his sleeve. The color palette that I want to use is muted. Um, that's the thing about this whole thing. I like a muted color palette. What are Tevas? I don't know. Tevas on his feet? I'm not sure what that means. Since he's from the 80s, I'm, I'm thinking what I used to wear in the 80s, and I had a pair of Jordans back in like the... Oh, God, I'm going to date myself here, but in the 8th grade. So when you see the final, I'm also going to show you the color because I actually cleaned him up and I did a colorized version of him. And I really think this is, once you nail a design, there's n like, because I don't have an art director I'm answering to on this, I just got this design done and it worked. It just worked the way I wanted it to. It gives me a jumping off point uh, for the next phase of this particular character and a place to go to for all the other characters. So it's going to be a lot of fun. So I think we can do that now. So I've got... This rough sketch, and this is really where I want to go with it. There, there's a little bit that I, I could play with, too, that I think I'll like better. Like, the the design that I really liked also, I shortened the, the apron to, like, this. So you could see a little bit more of him underneath it, which I, I like. It gives you an idea of his shirt and pants. I also gave him water pants, too. That helps. But yeah, pinch roll on one side. There we go. Water sa Oh, right. The water sandals. 
I do remember those. Now, if he ate coconut flavored something for dessert, grass skirt, Hawaiian shirt, total tevas. That would work. Um, I have been thinking a lot about that. It's not just the ice cream that he eats, it's all desserts. So if he eats some kind of uh, tropical dessert, you could I could really play with um, a hula thing or, you know, it, it's or if he eats bananas, he's got a monkey thing going on. You know, like there's all kinds of things I could do. Um, it really does go into play with the idea that you are what you eat. And I think I could play with that a lot here. That'd be a lot of fun. Okay, so here's the rough sketch of, of our our Mr. Ben Lurkin. And uh, Venny is down here, and that's V-E-N-N-Y, not, not Benny. So the name might be too similar, and that could be something we could revisit later on. It's just change his name. Um, not not for the zombie, because I like his name, but little Venny down here might be might be there. But they don't call him Ben Lurkin. They just call him Lurkin, because that's what his boss used to call him at the camp when he was in, there in the 80s, just Lurkin! Get that dessert out now! You know, that kind of thing. So now I'll show you how I, what I actually ended up with um, for his final design. I think you're really going to like it. So this is what we've got. Oops. So this is kind of where I wanted to go with it. This is... Um, the way I went, you know, I gave him a little bit of a scraggle, too, because he's, you know, late teens, early 20s, maybe he has a hard time um, growing a beard, growing a mustache, things like that. But this is where I want to go. This is, once you hit that design and you know it works, and it works on every level, it's it's cute. You can put him in different positions. You can put, you know, give him the different expressions. It's not too hard to manipulate. It's not going to be too hard to play with his expressions. The lines work. Everything works. Once you hit that sweet spot, you're like, oh, you take a huge breather. And then the real work begins on him. So this is the final phase of his design. And as you can see, I've added things to his design elements with color. Like he's got the muted colors. He's a redhead, which is funny because maybe in real life he was dark haired. And when his when he turned into a zombie, when the the brain freeze hit him, um, you know, terminal brain freeze hit him. His skin turned pale, you know, to this kind of pale green, you know, your classic zombie esque kind of thing. Um, and he's got kind of this reddish hair. The hair turns kind of more scraggly. Because um, here's the thing that you know, just like mummies, your hair keeps growing. Your nails keep growing after you're dead. So maybe his hair kept growing. You know, and it, having more hair gives me more to play with, too, for his character. So if I change him to something else, if I change him into a different character, to, like, design, or if I have to change, play with his character design, uh, if he's eaten a specific kind of dessert or, you know, something like that, I, I got more to play with. But the design is simple enough that I can man manipulate it easily. Um, get rid of the big one here. Okay, so we've got this, and as you can see, I added little details, like uh, I gave him purple eyes. Maybe I had blue eyes. You know, we started and everything kind of went south. Um, and he's got ice cream stains all over his apron. Like, that is really good. So I really think this is the best example of what I've been working up to. Uh, he's got almost a Ren and Stimpy-esque kind of thing going on with his eyes, which I really loved. I wasn't a big fan of that show, but I enjoyed the, the design styling of it. And I think that is a good... A good way to take things so I'm gonna move him over and now I want to bring Vinny up to spec with him so I'm gonna enlarge him a bit just so I can play with him a little bit and I'm gonna I'm gonna ink him just a little bit just just to kind of bring him up to where Mr. Lurkin is where Lurkin is so um, we're gonna play around and you're going to see how I how I get a little bit more done. Because Vinny, his design really kind of hit right away. I didn't have much to do with him. That egg shape and everything started defining the way everything else was going. So we're going to ink a little bit. And I've got a whole set of pens over here and things like that that I work with for inking. But yeah, so I'm going to add a layer on top of that. And it's just about keeping the lines clean for this and still thick and thin and stylized and still maintaining the character because you can focus so much on trying to hit all the lines perfectly that you lose the character so I still want to 
keep a free flow about about the character's design and things like that. You know, I'm, I'm, if, if lines stray a little bit, that's okay because it adds to his character. I don't know if we'll get to color him tonight, but you know, I know I was going to focus more on the zombie, but I really feel like I, I hit that design really well. So I don't need to change a whole lot. Oh yeah, as you can see, I got my pens working much better now, like the thick and thin. Oh, it's got this, oh, I love how it feels. And I do redraw lines until I get them where I want. It's not that I'm matching the, the black line underneath so much as it is. I'm getting the, the character of each line right where I need it to be to build on. Yeah, there we go. Same thing with his ear over here. I'm, I'm just kind of, even though you would never see it, I still need to show something over there. And he's, he's a happy kid, but, you know, he's small. And as I've said in previous sessions, he's... Got a thing with his size. He's he's a little he feels a little inferior, and some of the campers don't help with that, you know. And I'm losing something there. I don't like that. Because if I was going to create these characters for a character bible, um, I want them to see the best version of them in whatever scenario I'm putting them in. So I'm really focused on making the lines as beautiful as I can. Um, as far as my pen set. Uh, I finally ended up with more of a, it's medium, but there's a scale that you can play with in the calibration of your tablet. And now I have a Cintiq, um, and that's different, that'll, that'll work different than an Intuos. Um, both Wacom. So you'll have to play a little bit with that, but I found my happy medium, and the other thing that helped was taking off the I had a Logitech G13 gamepad for my quick keys, and once I took that off, they're, they're both input devices, and there was something that just didn't play well between the two, and now it's not messing up on me at all. Like, I get a little bit of, of something here and there, but it's not too bad. Oh, and let me mention, too, if you're watching this on your computer, don't forget to set your resolution as high as it can go. Um... That will help. Uh, that'll help your view on your screen. I realized last week that I had this set at optimally 480 uh, for my output, and my apologies for that. I know it was a more. It, it was such a great stream too with the with the pets, uh, or with the alligator as a pet, and uh, I was kicking myself because it didn't come out as the, the video didn't come out as clean. So my apologies for that as I figure this crazy, crazy thing out. But yeah, there's these gorgeous lines, and I'm a big fan of Bill Watterson, and I know some of you know who that is. Um, you know, creator of Calvin and Hobbes. Um, and uh, I, I love the fact that his little shoes that he puts on his characters look like little dinner rolls. And, you know, uh, there's a, a really cool quality his line. I'm a big fan of Scotty Young, too, the comic book artist. And while my work isn't as rough as his, I don't rely as much on the rough line. There is a really great comedic quality to his lines. and just, oh, I fall in love with him. If you have a chance, look him up if you're not familiar with his work. He did a multiple award-winning series that, that was the entire Oz book set, uh, set to graphic novel form. And his style is just so wonderful for that. Um, I'm all about promoting other artists. Um, one of the listeners on here, uh, a friend from college, uh, Sedge, she is a phenomenal artist. She does these really great pen and ink drawings, and the, the, the renderings that she does are just beautiful, beautiful work. Um, I have I love promoting other artists on here. I got I, I gave a shout out to my friend Steve uh, Burns, who is a he's a a hobbyist artist now but he's mostly a podcast guy and a uh, real big Disney enthusiast I went to high school with him and his wife and just lovely people and, and I gave him a shout out for his Burnsland website and uh, I just I try and help you know as much as I can uh, I got the idea for doing this from uh, Lost Bear Studios uh, one of the guys from the Creature Box duo uh, started his own and his stuff is oh, 
It just makes me cry. It's so beautiful. And I watch him every Monday. He's on every Monday, like, super late. I, I, don't, I can't remember what the exact time is for that, so. Um, but I'm a, I, I love promoting other artists. I love, you know, showcasing other artists' work. Oh, and I will be getting a t-shirt with the Camp Zombie logo and stuff and the big uh, thumbs up camp symbol on the back of it soon um, on Teespring. I, I'm trying it out to see if I can get it looking good uh, and I'll wear it for my my live stream. Because I, I always promote this stuff at, at cons and things like that that I go to. And I like wearing the shirts for the stuff that I'm working on. It helps get the idea out. So nice. So his uniform is a little bit Boy Scout esque, and that's on purpose. And I'm, you know, he's got this, he's got this um, innocence about him that I really, really love. He's from Brooklyn. Um, so he's got a little bit of an attitude, and I want to get that through without being, you know, stereotypical. Uh, it's nowadays, without getting too detailed, people get offended by everything, so you got to be really careful about how you present characters. You want him to have personality, but. You know, you still have to have your voice. You still have to have your expression uh, that you want to give your characters, and it, that's important. And you can't let someone take that away from you. I'm not asking. I'm not saying offend people on purpose, but you still need to tell your story, and don't let someone stand in the way of you telling your story. Um, yeah. guys and yeah that's what I'm going for it's very similar I'll shrink him back down to size when I when I get him to the point that I like I, I feel ready for that so yeah little Vinny is a avid baseball player or he wants to be he's small Yeah, I'll show pictures of the shirt when I get it in. I'm, I haven't ordered it yet. I just got the design. It's got a really big, the really big thumbs up symbol on the back, and on the front, it's the same logo as the sign, is this the logo for the, the live stream on the front? It says Camp Zombie with a logo, and it says the live stream below it. And there's going to be a variety of colors that's available. On one is kind of a swampy gray that I really like, but it might not show up as well on here, so I might get it on black or purple, which is weird for this. Again, I'm going for uh, design ease, so anatomy, yes, fingers don't work this way precisely. But I dare you to look at a SpongeBob SquarePants cartoon and tell me that the anatomy on that looks okay to you. <laughs> That's all right. Like I said, baseball. Loves baseball. Wow, that was actually really nice for that weird angle. Got it right where I wanted it.
Man, he's coming along really nice. Now, again, part of the reason he's coming along so quick is because he's got a great simple design. That's the point. All right. Do those eyes last? Those are going to be maybe the trickiest thing I got. I love drawn Chuck style tennis shoes. That's kind of my thing. Um, I do it a lot when I go, for those that don't know, I go to Disney once a week and I create character designs out of tourists that I see walking around for fun. With the same intention now, I used to do it just, just the tourists. Now I do it with the intention of what if it was a tourist TV show and I had to design a whole family. So I look for uh, inspiration to design a family in this same kind of vein as what I'm doing for Camp Zombie, like a show design kind of an idea. Um, anyway, I go to Disney once a week, change the, change the park from week to week. Uh, tomorrow I'm going into Hollywood Studios. And I can't help but draw Chuck style tennis shoes. I, I think they're hilarious. I think they work. You know, it's classic, classic cartoons with that big white front with a white rubber underneath and the colored cloth. Um, uh, how am I rotating drawing? There's a little tool up here underneath the navigator window and it, it's got two little arrows, one pointing one way and one pointing the other. And you click it and it rotates the drawing either way. It's the same buttons for the zoom and zoom out. And right next to uh, right next to the rotation buttons is the return button, and that returns it to the orientation when it started. Just like that. That gets the angle, so I don't have to rotate I don't have to rotate the entire tablet. Uh, some people like their Wacom Cintiq because they can rotate the tablet. Some of the older ones do that, some of the newer ones do too. And I'm like, that's all great, but my program makes it so that I don't have to worry about that. I can just leave the whole thing, just keep my quick keys where I like them. And almost. Oh man, that was close. All right, that's nice. Leave it right there for right now. And because I'm a cheapskate, I will just do a quick fill on those so I don't have to... You're going to end up with a little white outline right there. That's okay. From distance, you won't see it. Um, but... Now, I would be using the uh, concentric circle tool normally here, but because I want it to have a little bit more of a hand-drawn feel, um, I gotta, I'm, I'm not doing that this time. So let me... Circle's a little imperfect right there. Let me... He's got two big black orbs right now. It's a little creepy. You always want that little bit of light shining if you're doing this kind of work to break the circle because that keeps the eyes like liquid pools and it makes it look like the whole surface is shiny and not just the dark part of it. All right, I'm gonna have to rotate it back around to where I had it before because that's where I was getting. I find that if I have to do this kind of a thing I need to keep the board rotated or the, the drawing rotated at the same in the same way that I had it rotated when I drew those circles to begin with. And I screwed myself because I should have done it at the same time. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna start it over. And I forgot my first rule. I always do the outer ones first. and fill the inner ones. I don't know, I may end up going to the concentric. Ah, there we go. Okay, that'll work. Mm. I like it not. Eyes are important. That's why it's taking me so long. And I struggle with it. There we go. That's better. That's a lot better. I'll just hand fill it in. I won't worry about the fill tool. Let 
Remember, it's about the lost and found lines. Maybe if I do it like, yes, okay, that's better. If I just go for the whole shape, that works out better. It's got that wide-eyed innocent thing still going on. It's not perfect right at the moment. I'm just trying to give you guys a good example of what I'm doing. A little bit of a straight line there. I hate straight lines. It drives me crazy. Part of it's getting used to the, 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 even though I love the way it feels right now, there's still, yeah, that works. That's what I'm looking for. All right, now. Almost. I had it, the first one I got perfect. The second one, almost. Ah, that's what my problem was. I was going the wrong direction. These little lines down here give them a little bit more of a worried look. And that's okay. I'm going for that. I like it. Nice. Okay. Now, one thing I lost is how close his eyes are together. I'm going to fix that. Um, there was something really sweet about how close his eyes were together. I'm going to fix that right now. I'm just going to bump. Do a little bump. Just bring both of them around. I just do it a little bit at a time until I get it right where I want it. See, there's one thing that I noticed in the design of the other characters. Yes, that's nice. Uh, like, say, for instance, Mr. Edsel, or Edsel right here, you can see that line for his nose right here. Uh, there's a definite line in between his eyes. I just want to show youth by showing that that line isn't there yet. Like, their eyes are so big and they're so close together when they're young. Um, all right, so I throw a little bit of color on this guy. Got enough time for that. All right, so in keeping with... Like I said, I'm going to shrink him a lot further down so he matches the size correctly. Um, but I put the color behind the sketch and the tight drawing on him, and I did a little bit more rendering on his eyes. His eyes are a little more glassy, and that's fine. Um, but keeping, I got to remember to keep the colors muted, and I want Venny to be uh, more pale. He's from the north. Um, Uh, character model sheets, I always start off with the orthographics, the turnarounds. Um, a lot of the... A lot of the... Um, a lot of... Uh, emotional stuff, things like that, depends on the needs of the story at the time. And that's not the right shape, that's too pink. So it's not just, I'm just not going to throw a bunch of uh, emotions on a page. It has to be relevant to the character. Um, and sometimes I'll ask for more as I go. I'll throw some basic ones down just to get the idea of the show down. Um, okay, I am going to erase his eyes a little a bit. Um, 
because they're interfering with what I'm trying to do. There we go. Okay, that's good. And we're going to give him just some nice blue eyes. Yeah. Ah, huh. uh, yeah, I like that. I like that. Although, I'm not digging the skin color. Skin color is still too... It's going to sound weird. It's just too colorful. Go with a much darker color than I know I need. Try that. Oh, that's what is he dead? He's not dead. I don't like that. A lot of experimentation. That's better. Okay. Because, like I said, I'm trying to keep it muted. Um, I'm using a newsprint brush. That f newsprint brush I got from. Lost Bear Studios. Uh, if I zoom in, you could actually see a newsprint quality to the stroke, which is kind of cool. Yeah, now he looks a little mean. I gotta fix that. Let me get rid of that right there. There we go. Oh. Go back over the eyes again. Yeah, it's more muted blue too. That works good. Okay. So I don't want to forget about his hands. Skin's still not doing it for me. See, this is this is what this is all about. Just figuring it out. Um, there we go. I was going to uh, pink. I needed a bit. A bit more yellow in it. There we go. Oh yeah. Okay, that's better. This time I'll get all of his skin while I'm doing it. I won't have to go back and reselect the color. That was dumb. That was a dumb move on my part. I'll put a little bit of shadow in too uh, when I get to it. Okay, there we go. Looks like we'll move that. Sketch blow. There we go. It's much better. Now you can see it better. I didn't realize what the uh, um, what having the sketch above it was going to do. My mistake. I got to think about how it looks on screen too. But yeah, the model sheet. It, uh, it's going to depend a lot on, and of course I still forgot one part, genius. Um, it's going to depend a lot on the director's, um, uh, and it, it, there's sometimes just more that needs to get added to it, like I'll be doing work and then if they need work on a specific episode that's not something that they have, they call me back and say, hey, we need these emotions in this set, can you please work on that? And I'm like, oh, sure, because I like work. <laughs> All right. So we're going to give him brown hair. Just, you know, I want him to be average everyday Joe. Yes, I do include the color palette. Uh, the color is, is one of the most important things you need to let them know. Uh, it's part of the design decisions. Uh, the show has a color palette. It has a, a defined color palette. That's not brown enough. over again. I don't want it to be orange, but that wasn't brown enough. There we go. Um, you don't want like bright pink moving into a place where it doesn't belong. You know, like, yeah, this is, I like this watercolor brush because it overlaps itself and it really gives a nice texture. It's cool. Um, and I will, uh, sh on, uh, a show pitch I worked on called The Magic Poof, I gave the client, uh, my friend, that runs it a set of colors, a set of the base local colors, which is the colors 
without light and shadow applied uh, for each character. And that gave us the basis on which to augment those colors depending on mood or if there was a change of light or you know something like that. So yeah, you do. You, it's it's kind of right up front when you're showing the characters off, like how you're describing the characters. You have the the whole their whole color profile, if you will, kind of right there. All right. So here's where we got to make a decision. I have to decide, at least for right now, what color I want the the camp uniform to be, and if it's going to be slightly different on each character. And if so, what does that look like? So I'm kind of going off of. Lurkin's shirt. His is, is rather faded, um, but I like the color. But I don't want to wash this. I don't want to wash Venny out too much. Um, no, I, I've never had an instance on a show that I've broken my own rules. I have to stick to the rules as they are. The only time that you break the rules is for a dream sequence or something like that. There, there's very specific circumstances that that happens, and I have not run into that yet, but they do happen. I'm not saying they don't. Um, but, you know, we're going to go with a green. I'll go with an olive green. Um, yeah, I like that. That'll work. I, I haven't particularly run into that yet. Not in the sense that I think you're talking about. It needs to be an olive green. That was too bright. I always got to look for where I can mute those colors. Yes, here we go. Okay, I'm starting off with a medium tone so that I can go back over it and give it some shade and some shadow. Now, the girls might have a different color. It's more of a muted, you know, uh, uh, warm color rather than a cool color. I don't know yet. I haven't decided yet. But I'm keeping my pen steady on the screen so I don't overlap it because that's you know, because then I'll start, you know, which is what I want to do, but I don't want to do it by accident. I want to plan where I put the dark because I, I use the color on the overlap to do a little bit of shading, just basic, basic shading. And I haven't done masking layers yet. There will be a time and a place for that when I'm doing a full rendering of a character, like for a show, like promotional material, how you want to have like a much more rendered version of the character. Um, and I'll show that off then. Think of a general light source from above. That's all. All right. And I'll give him similar coloring to Mr. Lurkin's pants for his shorts. I don't want the whole thing to be the same color. That'd be boring. It can be. Like, that can be a decision we make later on. And it's like, oh, okay, it works better the other way, but. And you can get away with all kinds of the wrong kind of fashion rules and this kind of thing for kids. So I'll show you a close-up of that. So you can see kind of like this kind of texture. That's the newsprint brush. I did not create that. Um, Greg Baldwin at, at uh, CreatureBox did. And I don't I don't take credit for that. I'm not going to do that. I don't take credit for other guys' work. He, he worked hard on getting his brushes the way he likes them. And I'm not going to steal his thunder. I really think it's cool. Um, and I've wrote, written him on there in the comment section on his videos and thanked him all over the place. And he just says, yeah, go ahead and use him. You know, he's, he's cool like that. He's really cool like that. Okay. So I'll do a little bit of a purple for the shoe material. Oh, yeah. That's still too bright. See, I catch myself. There we go. That's better. I want it muted. There, seriously, if you've never seen the cartoon The Misadventures of Flapjack the Pirate, look it up because that is what I'm going for for muted tones. That one's a little extreme and it's not designed the same way I'm designing, but the color patterns and mutation, like the, the muted tones of those colors, is beautifully done. Okay. 
Okay. Let's do a brown belt. I don't care if the color overlaps here a little bit, that's fine. And we'll give him a dark. That's going to be too blue, but skew more towards the warm. It's like his pants. Okay, looking at his kerchief now. I can do the same thing I did with his hair, and this is just roughed in, like I said. This isn't a final rendering. This is just quick color to show what I'm thinking of. Yes. Liking this. All right. I'm going to keep the hand kind of like that yellow, unearthly yellow, and do kind of the same green for the hat. I just use a color picker and pick the shirt color. Now, when I get all the colors the way I want them, I will give my, I will create myself a palette that's custom on the lower left down here. Um, like, as you can see, I've got one set for uh, the Magic Poof, I've got one set for my Monty the Unfortunate Octopus, I've got one set for my McMorbidly's. Those are all different color schemes that I've set so that I can go back to them and uh, know that I'm picking colors that work within the same family I've created of colors. We're going to go back to this gray, like because sometimes underneath your hat is a different color than what's on top. Just wanted to give it some texture. And it would be really cool to get a hat like this. Um, I looked at the website that I am getting the t-shirts done on and they don't have a hat like this, a trucker's hat, so I'll have to keep looking. But uh, with that kind of thumbs up symbol would be awesome. Kind of like, you know, the way the hat was on Gravity Falls for those that know that show, how that uh, hat became iconic. You can't go to a Comic-Con now without seeing people wearing that stupid hat with a tree on it. Okay, for these I want to give it a little bit of shine. I want, to, want it to look metal, so I'm going to play, play a little with uh, some brighter colors to it, because it'll stand out more. do the bat and then we'll do some shading on his skin and then we'll be done with him for the time being. Let me go underneath everything for the bat. And I'm going with an orange color here because I'm going to put shades down on it that look like it's got a wood grain. And I got to start off with a lighter color. I'm just hinting at it. This isn't the best version of this I've done. I just want to kind of show it. Do another layer above that and keep it. Get a little bit of shadow going on, but I'm doing it at a, a lower opacity because I don't want to lose the lines I just drew in. Too much, too much, too much. Let's go back up. There we go. Nice. So it's a light color, but it works. Okay. Now I can do 
some darker tones on the skin. Because like I said, he's an egg shape, so I can get away with and just keep remember that form. Give myself a bigger brush. Now I'm gonna play with um, I am gonna play with a mask. So in Clip Studio Paint, you create another layer above that, and there's this little there's a little lighthouse picture, and then next to it is a square with a little transparent square over it. You click that, that's the layer mask. That means when you paint on top of this shape, on a layer above it, it only paints within the boundaries of the color below it. So, like that. I need to darken it just a bit more. There we go. So I don't like just go completely off. blend just a little bit, use a blend tool just a little bit. I, don't, I haven't done that much on this particular series in the videos, but it's important. I also want to remember his hat shading everything. <laughs> Need to fix his eyes a little bit. All right, so I've got a blend tool, and I've got this thing called a Blur by Fiber. The newer versions of Clip Studio Paint don't come with this tool. I ported it over from my old uh, version. And it gets kind of a, a nice rough edge to the blend. So if you get your hands on that brush, I highly recommend it. I need to look at starting up an account on Gumroad and I'd be able to give some of that stuff away. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to mask it down because now the, the dark needs to be more apparent. So I'm not I'm working on a mask layer anymore. I'm working directly on the layer itself. This goes more into my my painter's mind than it does my character design mind. And he's not losing his age, that's the thing. I don't want to so render it that it looks like he's older than he is. That's that's a mistake. That means I haven't done my job right. I keep some of the rough, jagged, like, scribble lines in there like that. You know, maybe he's got some freckles, like that would be fun. Just a little bit of Like they're not in the black line, they're just there. Oh yeah, I like that. I really like that. Okay, works good. And I'll go back to, and I can now play with like a lighter color so I can throw some highlight in there. I'll have to do it above though. I'll need a different newsprint. Yes, there we go. Okay, just needs to be lighter, much, much lighter. Too light. Not light enough. There's a strict balance. Yeah, that's that's better. It's a bit better. Wrong color though. I go just color picker and go up from there. How about that? Except I'm gonna use an airbrush. Yes, it's not the newsprint, but I want a softer tone. And some of this stuff, and it might be a little hard to see. And there, these are, these are, it's a very subtle thing. And I'll take white, and this is more of an illustrator thing. I'll take white, I'll go in with a pencil tool, like a lighter pencil, and just kind of throw some lines in there like this. It's, it's, it's more of a painter thing, like I said. This would never be animated, but this is to sell the show. Uh, there'll be a different aesthetic for the actual, like, how the light and the shadow work animation wise. Yeah, yeah, you can see his chin quiver. That's, you know, that, then I'm conveying him properly. That's good because he's, he's an emotional little kid. I'm kind of drawing it off myself a little bit. I was an emotional kid. And being intimidated by people when I was younger, 
was not fun. And Mr. Lurkin gives him that sense of confidence. You know, having this big guy around him gives you a nice sense of confidence, and it's, it's important. All right, so let me blend just a little bit of this, this deal right here. I'm not, I'm not sold on this yet. There we go. I don't want it to be such a, there we go, that's better. All right. Let me bring the highlight down. I'm not going to worry about a highlight for his clothes right now. Um, I am going to do more work on his eyes, though. Uh, I, there's this idea about eyes that I love. Eyes, especially like, and I'll go in close so you can see it. Eyes are concave, like the, the iris goes in, not out. So the light affects it reverse. The part that's closest to the highlight is actually darker because that's going up. It's being, it's a shadow that's being cast by the light. The other side that's furthest away is where the light's hitting, so you have to play to that. I'll go back down to my newsprint. Yeah, so like the light coming from above would be hitting it right here. Make that a little bit bigger. And it would be lighter down here. I know that sounds weird. For those that haven't done this kind of thing before but it's true and you can really like I'll play I'll play with uh, the darker tones here and there's a little bit of a rim light around the blackest black itself and I'll show you what I mean in just a second but and then I'll go to the lightest light and if I was really rendering this out, I wouldn't be doing it quite this rough. Not too much. There we go. Okay. Just like that. And it kind of eats. They, they kind of bleed into each other just a little bit right there. All right. And then I'll go to my whitest white, which would be... Not that strong. <laughs> it's a bit of a play. Right. Like that. And then I'll do this color again, but I'll just barely touch the edge. It really makes that eye pop out really nicely. Gives it a nice form. Actually, I need to do one more section of dark real quick. is a trick to it. Okay, and now I'll go back to this kind of color right here. And like I said, it's not, if you can tell, it's not clean, and I'm not trying to keep it super clean within the lines. There's a, a little bit of a watercolor vibe to it, which is cool. Um, And in the whites, that's nice. In the whites, nobody's eye is white, ever. Just keep telling yourself that over and over again, you'll be fine. So I'll go to the, my airbrush tool. That's my hair tool. My airbrush tool and just kind of put a little bit of a shadow right here. Just a little one. That's too big. And then I'm going to take my pure white and just ever so barely, I'm going to go above everything else, above the lines, there we go, above the lines, and then just do a little bit of highlight down into this. And it gives you the knowledge that the whole thing is very shiny, and it adds a lot more character to him. It's finding the right placement. 
There we go. Yes, that works. All right. It's a little bit of shade here and there. I need to do the wrapping on the bat and the baseball, and he's good. And then we'll probably wrap up from there. So I'll do that. I'm going to bring that down there. And those who want to see the uh, the pet one from last week, it's up there, um, and it, it was really fun. I highly suggest you go back and watch it. Um, oh, thanks so much. I'm glad you like the eyes. Yeah, those are. There's a way that I do that. It's a lot more rendered than this. This is super loose. Like I said, this is for creating a character for a kid show, so it's simpler, it's looser. I'll give you a little glimpse. If I wanted to do something that was more tight. Um, to give you an idea of what my other stuff looked like, I'll pull over my, my main website and you can see it real quick. So I do this series of characters that is, oh, let's do this. Let's go to one of my character galleries. So this is a good example of how I, I work eyes on a much uh, more fantasy, more serious character. So you can see it right here, you can see like the eyes right there, and this is off my main website, it's tkylegentry.com. Um, this is a lot closer, this is super tight. This is using the same program, but this is a, a very painterly, very illustrator character design style that I have. I have several different styles. But this is much, this uses the same technique, but it uses to a lot more detail. So that's what I'm going for there. Um, just to give you an idea. But I'm glad you like it. Yeah, it's it's a cute little technique. I was I've seen other artists use it, and I really I was like, wow, I can I can adapt that. You know, you learn from everything around you, of course. So we'll give this ball some shading. I'll give it a little bit of the red that you would see around stitching on a on a baseball. Brush is too big. Like I said, muted colors. That's how I want this. Mute, mute, mute. And some weeks I may get away from the Camp Zombie thing just to take a break um, and focus on my Monty the Octopus series. That's an interactive wall art series. I, I'll talk more about that when I get to it. And uh, more along the lines of uh, my Macabre Morbidly's, which is a series of creepy family portraits that are fun and creepy, kind of like they'd hang in the Haunted Mansion at Disney or something. Um, and uh, I'm, when I get to the 50, I'm going to do a book of them. And right now I sell them as individual prints. But if you go to my website, which is linked below the vid, uh, I believe, I'll make sure it is, uh, which is tkylegentry.com, there's also a link to my shop there so you can get books and prints and things like that. But everything that I work on is is on that website. I'm also on Instagram, uh, tkgentryart. Uh, is my handle on Instagram and my Facebook fan page. Just uh, look for uh, T. Kyle Gentry Character Designer, I believe. Um, that's also there. I'm starting to get a little bit away from Facebook because of the way Facebook is now. So, all right. So, here's Benny. And I'm going to merge his layers. And I'll get his size back down to where it should be. Yeah, so that's the first time he's been in color. So yeah, he's he's a little dude, um, and I want the I want the zombie to be kind of larger than life to him. You know, he's like a little sidekick almost. The zombie, when I start working on the zombie and I start working on facial expression stuff, whatever dessert he eats, he's gonna take on the persona of that dessert. Like I said, so if he's eating red velvet cake, that's like super high frou frou, and <laughs> he'll he'll just magically don the persona of someone. Um, uh, magically don the persona of someone that uh, is is very fancy, you know. Um, whereas Rocky Road, you know, he'd be a trucker. I mean, that would be awesome, right? Um, you know, I, I can play with that all day long, so there's a lot of things I could do with that. Um, 
You know, he eats like there used to be at Baskin Robbins ice cream. There used to be Superman flavored ice cream, which is just all these different multicolors. And there could be some kind of superhero ice cream. And he turns into he thinks he's a superhero. He turns his apron around. It's a cape behind him or something. I can play with all that, and we're going to explore that as we go. Um, but I want to get the char characters nailed down first before I start to refine how each character behaves. So, oh, you like the you like the uh, the website? Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Yeah, the the fur is a lot of fun. I love textures and I love detail which this camp zombie thing shows the other side of my personality when I come to design characters. This stuff has to be much simpler than how I would paint. Uh, but how I draw is very different. But I'm, I'm really glad you like it. Just go ahead and, and keep looking. I got all kinds of stuff in there, and feel free to hit any of the links and che check out the other stuff. But I appreciate you giving it a look. I, I do. Um, so I'll bring up the other stuff again. Um, so this is where Mr. Lurkin started, up here in the upper left. Um, and I think I'm going to drop the mister because that just makes him sound older. I'm just going to call him Lurkin. And Ben Lurkin. And because uh, for those that don't know, lurkers are another word for zombies. So Lurkin was, just seemed like a natural fit. And I need to put a, a I, I might put a little name tag on him. That'd be super cute. Just like Lurkin. Uh, B Lurkin. Ha, huh, still works. Um, so there we go for uh, this week's. Um, I've, I think I've pretty much nailed down the final design of Mr. Lurk in the way, or pardon me, Lurk in the way I want him to look. Vinny got some color thrown on him, and that's something I can play with. I can play with the shades and the colors of his clothing. You know, other people do it the same way. They'll, they'll get in the saturation and the color changes with a slider, and you can play with that. Uh, but again, just want to keep things muted. Uh, there's a certain loveliness to muted colors. Uh, in children's shows, everything that you see for the most part is so overblown colorful that I think you could do a really good job with muted colors and really make it a great show. Uh, I don't know if this will ever turn into a real show. I created it just for this live stream series to show how I work, but it would be cool if it was. Um, so I really appreciate you guys tuning in and, uh, you know, give the, give the video a like, subscribe to my channel. Um, hit that little bell up there for notifications so you know when I got live stuff coming. But it's for this stuff, it's pretty much every Thursday night. Also, on Instagram and Facebook, uh, my Facebook fan page, and also on MeWe, I'm on there as well. Um, I will be doing these little quick 30-second long time-lapse stuff for my Macabre Morbid Leaves number one and for my tourist sketches from Disney and also any of the general stuff. Uh, Clip Studio Paint allows you to do time-lapse video now. And you're going to see a lot more of that come up. So I'm going to try and do one a day. So you, there will be these, what's called seriously sinister sketches from my Macabre McMarbleese. There will be the, uh, I'm going to use that format for all the tourist drawings that I do from here on out. There might be still, but it'll be done with a, with a time lapse at some point. You'll see both the final and the time lapse. So look for those because they're fun to watch. And you can see in a quick form how I work all the time. So I hope you guys had a good time tonight. I really appreciate you being here. Um, I really appreciate you sticking around and, and watching this, watching me work on this character, and I uh, can't wait to show you what's coming. We're, we're going to be doing environments for the camp. It's For those that don't know, it's in the Everglades, so it's in South Florida, and what do the buildings look like? They're on stilts above the swamp water and, and things like that. Uh, it's, it's world building for a TV show called Camp Zombie. So join me every Thursday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and uh, you guys have been awesome. Keep up with me on social media, and I will chat with you all soon. Have a great week. Be safe. Be calm. God bless you guys. Peace out.